So Casey, you're currently living in Costa Rica. Uh, could you tell us a bit about the culture and what it's like to live there? Oh, well, it's like any other Latin American country in that it's, you know, fundamentally a Latin culture and Catholic. Um, and what that means is that there's a little less emphasis on on time and more emphasis on relationships. Mm -hmm. So people, when you interact with people, they're, you're expected to, you know, engage in some pleasantries and conversation before you really get to the point about what you want to talk about. <laughs> Which is a little hard for some Americans to take, right? Because they, yeah. they want to the point, let's, let's do the business and get out of here. So so there's that. But they're not, uh, you know, as far as the religious ex aspect, they're not over the top about it. I mean, they're very tolerant here. And and nobody, people invite us to, you know, various things like the first communion of their daughter or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's cool. It's relaxed. You know, it's not a, it's not a big formal thing. Nice. Um, there's a little twist in Costa Rica in that uh, if you know some of the history of Costa Rica, when it was first discovered, the Spanish named it Costa Rica because they thought there was a lot of gold here. Oh. Right? <laughs> and they quickly found out that there really wasn't so much gold here, but they dumped a lot of colonists here, and then they just pretty much ignored them for about 100 years. <laughs> so, so compared to some of the other countries in Central America, they didn't, for instance, they didn't have slaves here. Mm -hmm. So... The people had to do everything themselves. They had to work the land and, and the farms and pretty much get along without Spain's help. And you can really see that in how people are very independent here. They do mm. things for themselves and and uh, and they're very proud too. Uh, they're very proud of their democracy. They're very proud that they have a long history of democracy. They don't have an army and that they've decided to put money into education and health care instead. Wow. So, uh, so for instance, like... Uh, in the U.S., you know, the 4th of July is all about fireworks and picnics and stuff like that. Here, when they have Independence Day, you're expected to show up for what's called an acta civica. So people gather in, in schools or churches or something like that, and they have speeches and sing the national anthem. I mean, it's, it, those kind of things are, are a little different. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> lovely. Um, I'm not sure. You know, most of my experience with Latin culture came from Mexico, because I spent a lot of time there. Um, but I would say that uh, Ticos, that's what they call themselves, Ticos here, they're even friendlier than they are in Mexico. I mean, they invite you into their home, and, and you're just, you instantly become part of the family, right? They're very polite, uh, and the children are very respectful. You know, they don't beat them with switches or anything, but <laughs> and they're, they're so respectful. So like uh, sometimes I pick up my son at school and uh, I have the pickup truck and there's a lot of kids that want to ride because they have to walk a long ways home. So they pile in the back um, and when they get out, they come to the front window. I roll down the window and they stick out their hand to shake me and thank me for the oh, ride. That's lovely. <laughs> that's kind of a surprise. Yeah. Um, it's also, I think it's starting to change now, you know, because of the population, but, but Costa Rica still has a lot of its agricultural rural mm -hmm. roots. Um, that show so there's you know people get by with what they can and they, they uh, you know they, they jury rig things to make them work and um, so it's, there's no there's no garage sales here because I don't know if you have garage sales in England but in, in yeah, the US they're <laughs> very popular right but here garage sales are very rare because if, it, if somebody's selling something used you can bet that it doesn't work because <laughs> <laughs> they'll just use it they'll just use the thing they worn out <laughs> Lovely. So, yeah, so you know, so that's what it's like, uh, you know, culturally. Nice. Um, you're retired at the moment, but you used to be a software engineer. What was it that yeah. actually prompted you to take early retirement and move there in the first place? Well, um, before I was a software engineer, I was kind of a hippie. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and I worked in that. I worked in home construction. My father and I built houses. Uh, one at a time, and uh, I didn't always work full time. You know, I like to take a lot of time off, and I did a lot of traveling, like I mm -hmm. said, in Mexico and Guatemala. Um, but after a while, that kind of got old, and I needed to really make some money. And it was just when uh, computers were coming out. I don't know if you remember the old Sinclair Z80 computer. It was like a little tiny thing that you hooked up to your TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, I got one of those. I was fascinated with it, so I decided to go into computer science. Nice. Um, 
and I spent about 20 years in that industry. Uh, it was pretty interesting, and, and I made a lot of money, but after 20 years, I think I was starting to feel the burnout. You know, mm. It just didn't seem fulfilling anymore, and I wanted to kind of get back to my dreams in my youth, which was to live in a different country and experience, you know, not just as a tourist, actually live there, mm. right, and become a part of the culture. And and, uh, and, I, and I'm also uh, the kind of person who... Um, they don't have big ambitions about making lots and lots of money. I think if you've got enough money to meet your needs yeah. and maybe a little cushion, that that's enough, right? And enough is a very happy place to be. So so Costa Rica kind of, you know, other, other countries would fulfill that too, but Costa Rica yeah. uh, nicely. And so it just, came, it just came to a point where I, I felt like I needed to change. And I kind of looked at the, our financial situation and said, you know, we can actually do this. It's not like I got a million dollars in the bank, but we could actually do this and, and get by and, and, and live a decent life. Lovely. So, so I took the plunge. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Um, what's the best thing about living there, if you could choose a couple? Um, well, there isn't really any one thing. I mean, it's kind of a combination. Uh, I mean, the climate is very enjoyable. Mm. It's Even though it's more humid, it's not... Um, I don't know what they... If you've experienced uh, humidity like they have in the Midwest in the U.S., mm. it's just it's just awful. It's just <laughs> you take a shower and you immediately you feel sticky again, you know. Yeah. And even though I'm sure the humidity is just as high here, somehow it's different, right? So we got we got used to the humidity pretty quickly. Plus we're up in the mountains, so it's it's not as bad as down on the mm. on the beach. Um, so that and the you know the temperatures between 65 and 85 all year round. Um, you know, I thought I would miss having four seasons, but I really didn't. <laughs> and I especially don't miss the long, dreary winters. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's nice, you know, and of course the people. I mean, if the people were not friendly, it would be kind of a isolated experience down here. But, you know, we get along really well with our neighbors and we invite each other over for coffee and, and so forth. Mm. Uh, what else? It's, uh, I don't know. It's just, you know, it's peaceful. There's that feeling of, you know, you're outside of the, the kind of the marketing pressure bubble in the U.S. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no junk mail here. Oh, nice. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not having uh, uh, people calling me up on the telephone trying to sell me stuff. So it's kind of nice. Yeah, and, and that does sound good. And because, you know, not just because the Costa Ricans are tolerant, but there's a lot of expats down here. And they're from a lot of different countries, so it's a very international experience as well, which is something you don't get in a lot of the U.S. because, you know, to call them xenophobic would be a little strong, but I think it's more just ignorance. People, they're just so satisfied to live in the U.S. and they just, you know, sometimes it's like they don't realize there are other countries in the world, yeah. right? <laughs> they don't have much incentive to learn another language, yeah. you know, or understand other cultures and... And uh, it's nice to kind of be out of that. Yeah. So speaking of other languages, did you speak Spanish before you moved there? And if not, was it a challenge to settle in? Uh, it, uh, I did um, study Spanish in college for a couple of years. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in total, I probably spent mm, six or seven months traveling around in Mexico and Guatemala. Um, so I got to use it. But that was back in my 20s. Uh, and then it just pretty much sat idle for a long time. Mm. So so when I got here, I, had, I of course, had the foundation, um, but it was difficult. <laughs> it was difficult for the first year because, uh, not so much because the Costa Rican Spanish is different because their pronunciation and so forth is what I expected and it's very clear to understand. They don't mumble um, and they're very helpful. You know, there's, I, there's so many times when I used to go and talk to somebody in Spanish um, you know, like a, a clerk at a hardware store or something like that. And I'd see the same guy over a period of three months and always talk to him in Spanish. And then we finally got so stuck that he started speaking English. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't realize he's, he's perfectly fluent in English. <laughs> you know, and so I asked him, I said, why didn't you tell me before that you speak English? And, you know, and this is typical Tico. He says, well, you were, you were trying, so I, th I thought you wanted to practice. Oh. <laughs> well, that's it's useful, I suppose. <laughs> oh, amazing. 
That's happened more than once. That's happened a lot of times. Yeah. It's a good place to learn Spanish. But but the first the first year was, um, you know, there's a lot of things you have to do when you move to a new country, a lot of bureaucratic things, a lot of things. We were building a house. There was a lot of things I have to buy. Mm -hmm. And so I was in town almost every day. And so I'd usually remark to my wife, well, I'm off to go be stupid now because that's <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. when, you, when you can't. When you're not totally fluent in the language, no, it's much, much better, much more comfortable with yeah. it. But, uh, was there anything that you found particularly odd or surprising when you first moved? Well, yeah, I was thinking about that, and it was it, it took a while for me to think up something about that because uh, it's been so long, everything seems normal now. Mm. Um, one of the first things that was odd to us was that here people come and visit your house unannounced. Mm. It's just they just show up. They never call ahead, <laughs> and and they expect you to, you know, drop everything and and have coffee or whatever and talk and and uh, the, and I guess the way we adjusted to it is we started doing the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> it so, sounds like a very friendly culture. Yeah, it is very friendly, very friendly and respectful. But but they're also they're respectful of your privacy too. I mean, they would not be. Their feelings would not be hurt if you said, well, I can't right now because I'm doing something. But mm -hmm. So that was kind of uh, that was kind of strange. What else? Uh, I, mean, I mean, most of it we expected, right? Because we'd been here before, and, uh, and I knew a little bit about Latin culture. Um, I think some of, the, some of the surprises that were negative uh, was that it was, it was more expensive to live here than we thought it would be. Especially for uh, owning a car, cars are very expensive. They're about twice what you'd pay in the U.S. Wow. for a particular model, even used cars. Um, and gas is expensive, mm -hmm. and the roads really the, the the gravel and rock roads really take a toll on your car more than you expect. So you really have to kind of plan ahead and set aside some money every year for you know new tires because tires will only last like a year and a half if you're lucky. Yeah, it sounds like. Sounds <laughs> it's like not because it's not because the tread wears away. It's because the cord inside the tire just gets so beaten up that they start leaking. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you so have some interesting, um, some interesting weather as well. By the sound of it, do you have any amazing storm stories? <laughs> yeah, I've got one. Uh, you know, we're south. We're we're close enough to the equator that we're outside of the hurricane zone. Um, Five years ago, just before we moved down here, they had a big, it was a Pacific cyclone that came in mm -hmm. and quickly turned into a tropical storm called Alma. Uh, but that was the first one in 112 years. Wow. So they don't get big hurricanes here, but they do get some of the some of the flack, you know, when there's a big tropical storm in the Caribbean or something. Yeah. It'll bring rain in here, but you don't get the big winds. Mm -hmm. But there was a year, I think it was the second or third year we were here, and it started raining, and it didn't stop for three days. Oh. I mean, const constantly, 24 hours a day for three days. So there, consequently, on the Pan American Highway, there were a lot of slides. Um, they closed the highway. Uh, it was still closed when um, a friend of mine I had to go pick up his daughter, and I had to go pick up my sister at the airport. Mm -hmm. They were they were going on different flights, but the same day. So we said, okay, let's go. We don't know, we have no idea what the roads like. But let's go check it out <laughs> so we started driving like at five in the morning and we had to we had to navigate around several big slides that were blocking both lanes you know fortunately the shoulder was big enough that we could just get around uh -huh. we get to the, we get to the top of the mountain this is like the halfway point and you can sit there and have coffee and look out at the highway and we were there for maybe 40 minutes and not a single car went by uh -huh. <laughs> this is the main highway that goes through yeah. the center Right, so it was like so we knew it was bad. Mm. <laughs> we made it. We made it. And, and, Good. And we, and we made it back. Yeah. <laughs> but a, big, a big storm can come in. You know, a lot of water. It, I mean, it, it can rain in our area. The rainy season lasts from about April to December, and in that time, you can get 150 to 200 inches of rain. Wow. Right, and it and it's it doesn't come all at once, right? Yeah. <laughs> so some, Sometimes it's just a it's just a torrent. I mean, you just can't believe it. You can you, you can't see a hundred feet because the rain is so thick. Wow. Other times it's just misty and and drizzly. Yeah. 
I feel like I can't complain about England's reign now. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we don't but have the, that much. <laughs> the big difference here is that uh, even in the rainy season, almost every morning it's sunny. Oh, that's nice. Up until about noon, give or take, it's mm. sunny. And the clouds come in and it rains. But so, so you never feel, you know, down in the dumps and mm. under the weather, literally, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you have a family as well. Uh, what are the main challenges you found that were specific to moving abroad with children? Well, uh, you know, I think it really depends on the age of the children. Mm. I mean, if they're if they're under ten, say, they're really not going to know the difference. <laughs> they don't have enough experience to really compare. I mean, they'll miss their friends, and and it's a change for them. Um, but they can adapt pretty quickly. When they get older, then they've got more permanent friendships with other kids, and they're going to miss those. Or uh, they're more—they're just more resistant to the idea, right? Mm. Um, I mean, I, th I think if you have toddlers, it's just—it's a no-brainer, right? I mean, they're not going to—they're just going to grow up as this is normal for them. Mm. So that I mean, so that our son, when we moved down here, he was ten, so right there at the cut. Mm. <laughs> So he just, he went with the flow. I mean, I think the, ch the challenge, though, is um, you worry about keeping them occupied, right, and keeping them challenged educationally, because in the U.S., I mean, it's the, the norm there is, you know, you send your kid to school, and then he has two or three after-school activities during the week, right, soccer, baseball, taekwondo, dancing, you know, whatever, mm. it's, and you're always driving around to all these different places. And here it's not, I mean, not only are there, that exists, but there's less of it. Mm. But but also we live in a rural area, right? So we can't drive to town two or three times a day. It's just not practical. Um, but since we got the internet, he's pretty pretty well engaged with that. And he can keep in touch with friends back in the States and mm. play a lot of video games. But that's one of the concerns. I mean, you, you need to think about, you know, kids are growing mentally and physically, and so you got to keep them active, yeah. right? And then the other thing you worry about is health care, right? In my, is my kid going to get the right, right health care? Um, fortunately, in Costa Rica, um, I don't really have a lot of good things to say about the public health care, <laughs> which is partly endemic to this, this region. It's, it's worse here than it is in other parts of Costa Rica. But the private care is just excellent. I mean, dental and medical, it's just, it's just superb, and it's really cheap. So, so you can get by here without insurance because you're – you're actually paying less than insurance premiums mm. just for regular care and even, even some emergencies. Um, yeah. the, the other thing is education, right? You worry about, is my kid getting the best education he can? Um, it's kind of bag here. It's like he's, we started him off in private school. Uh, there's one, there's one, in Costa Rica, there's one national curriculum that all schools, public and private, have to follow, kind of the core curriculum. Mm. And if you're in school... Um, they pretty much stick to that curriculum. There might be a few extras. In private school, there'll be a few more extras, right? like computer classes or something like that. But uh, um, it's you know it's hard to it's hard for me to compare with the U.S. because the school system's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But it seems like they're a little maybe one grade behind what he would be doing in the states, right? But on the other hand. He, uh, now he's in a public, it's a junior high, high school combined. Um, now that he's in a public school, I worry a lot less about uh, bad influences mm. on him in the States. In the States, it's just a free-for-all. You know, by the time kids are in high school, they're already driving cars there. Um, you know, in the drug scene and whatever, it's just, it's just much more intense than here. The kids are very respectful. They don't have a lot of possessions, so they're not very materialistic, right? They're not going around wearing the latest iPod and yeah. the latest iPhone and stuff like that, so uh, they're much more mellow. And and he seems to have adapted very well. I mean, he's, his Spanish is much better than mine now, and and he's made a lot of friends, right? And, 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 and I think I don't worry so much about the education because uh, well, in about three years, he's going to be out of high school here, and that's kind of an inflection point where we have to decide, well, what are we going to do? What's the next step? Mm. Part of that's going to depend on him, what 
he thinks, you know, at that stage. Um, but we might, one of the options is that we might temporarily move back to the States just to get him started off in college there. Mm -hmm. But he might want to go to university here. Um, they do have a couple of really good universities in San Jose. Nice. Um, so, so that's an option too. So yeah. those, are, those are the things about, you know, <laughs> if you've yeah. got a family, you've got to think about all that stuff. Yeah, definitely. If you're just coming here to retire, then those things aren't really a concern. <laughs> I guess, yeah. Um, so that's that's great. With just one final question, what advice would you give to any anyone who's thinking about moving abroad, whether with a family or without? Um, I think, uh, you know, the best advice, which is pretty obvious, is do a lot of homework, right? Do a lot of research about where you're going and try alternatives. Don't just focus in on one country. Um, uh, all, all those issues kind of go away, though, if it's somebody that's that's moving because of a job transfer, right? I mean, I would have loved to have gotten a job transfer because then everything's paid for by the company, you know, and they're going to make sure you're taken care of and you know that it's temporary. So even if you hate it, you know, you're going to come back someday, right? That, that's a really, but not everybody can do that, right? But, but if you're doing it on your own, like we did, then, then, uh, you know, do as much research as you can, but, but remember that no matter how much research you do, there's going to be unexpected things. Yeah. <laughs> there's just things you, you can't think of everything. You don't know what it's going to be like. And, and also you have, to, you have to kind of resist the effects of culture shock. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just culture shock. It's just that you're, you've moved to it. I mean, if you move to another area in your home country, right, you have to adjust. You've got to find out where the stores are, how things are done, what taxes to pay, and, and so forth like that. Um, but when you're in another country, you might feel that even, you know, tenfold. And so you have to give yourself time. You've got to give yourself one or two years to adjust and not, you know, not uh, succumb to the to uh, the flight response <laughs> to get out of this. I can go back to where I was. Um, you know, and along those lines, I, I recommend people really think about their financial situ situation. If they think they're going to come to another country and they... They're calculating it down to the to the penny, and they think, yeah, I think we can just make it. Don't do it, right? Because you need a little cushion because there's going to be stuff that you didn't count on. It's mm -hmm. going to cost you money. <laughs> and the worst thing to be is away from your home country and struggling, especially in a country like Costa Rica where it's not easy to make money. Yeah. Right? Because because uh, average labor cost here is around two or three bucks an hour. It's kind of minimum wage, right? Yeah. So unless you've got Unless you've got an ongoing business or something, or some some uh, income stream from something else, uh, you, you're not going to make a lot of extra money to to make up for those rare events that happen. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, I'm I'm the kind of a guy who who always likes to do things on his own. So when I was in the states, it's like I would avoid lawyers and accountants and those kind of people because oh, I can figure it out and do it myself. You're, you really need to find those people. Because you know the the law is different for one thing. The whole basis for law is common law here is, is different than it is for like England and the U.S. So those people need to know uh, about that. You need you need to know. You can't really know about all the tax laws. It's difficult, you know, because of the language barrier. So you got to find a way to find people that you can trust that speak your language. Um, and it's not going to cost you that much. It's mm -hmm. going to be a lot less than it would cost in the States, so, so don't worry about it. It's going to be well worth it. Um, I don't know. You need, you need to, one of, the, like, one of the things that we didn't expect, or, or that I didn't expect, actually, was how often my wife needs to go back to the States for visits. I haven't been back for five years. <laughs> Since we came here, I haven't set foot in the U.S. So, but she's gone back three or four times. For various reasons, right? So, that's something you have to discuss ahead of time because that's a big expense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, otherwise, I think the bottom line is you just got to hang loose. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to kind of go with the flow and let yeah. it roll over sometimes because because there's just going to be times where you where you, uh, I mean the worst thing is to get into the mode where you, that I see some people and they start complaining about the country mm -hmm. and they oh stupid ticos why did they do it that way. It's like, I don't care why they do it that way. That's the way they do it. <laughs> so I have to accept it. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, that's, yeah, that's really helpful.
Okay, so thank you for talking to us. It's been really cool. And uh, yeah, we'll look out for further updates on Expert Focus and on your blog. Okay, well, thanks very much for the opportunity, Scar. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure.